so typically I would cover the common error codes uh, after we're done with the 301, 399. Um, so common error codes for these products. Now, when we did this, um, Kenny was part of this. He was up at the factory. Uh, we worked together. We did a couple of recordings. This was originally on Gen 1. Uh, so you'll see the gray display uh, as shown here. And where did he go? Charlie. Yeah, but I need to get the uh, I need to get the audio running on this. All right, so here we're showing common error codes. So right now we have two error codes that we're showing. Um, in this recording, by the way, or all of the recordings are audio. Um, so again, we have uh, error code 35 and error code 80. We're going to show you how to get the remaining, uh, viewing any remaining error codes that may exist. And you would power off the display. Choose the mode button. Press and hold the mode button. And up pulls the error history. Okay, that's your parameter 1EH. So there is um, error code 80, and all Kenny did was selected. Uh, this, he pushed on the selection switch, and now he can scroll through to actually see any of the error codes that existed. In most cases, you're only going to have one. Um, you're not going to have multiple. You could, but um, that's how you can view the remaining error codes. Okay. Um, now, let's talk about these error codes. So commonly, error code 10 and 11. So error code 10 is flame has extinguished eight times. Error code 11 is ignition failed 10 times. So error code 10 means that we actually lit. The boiler lit under ignition, okay? And then we lost flame. Error code 11 is it didn't light, okay? Um, so we give you multiple tries there on ignition failure, okay? Um, and what this is, error code 10 and 11, is all about air, gas, spark, okay? Um, so flame, again, has extinguished eight times. That's error code 10. That means that we lit. So what's left? It's air fuel mixture. We actually had spark. Does that make sense? All right. So pre gas pressure. Uh, and again, we want to put a manometer on that. And again, you're going to have it reads in and out or downstream or manifold. Uh, yeah, uh, offset pressure would be the out on that. Um, and so first thing to check for is fuel, fuel input. And again, our range for natural gas is three and a half to ten and a half. Uh, on propane is eight to 13. What did I ask? What did I say to you guys? Our minimum our max pressure drop can be one full inch, okay? One full inch. So in this example, put a manometer on, we're reading 6.8. Um, and we want to run all the appliances. What is that pressure drop? And we do not want to see greater than a one inch pressure drop. And that means I don't want to be any lower in this example than 5.8, okay? All right. Spark. Um, so here we have the transformer and igniter. And what I'm going to show here is, I think, the video, if I can get it to work. Oops. Can you just stop the right there real quick? Yeah. 6.8. So you're saying at 6.8, that goes down, and let's say gas appliances, you've got to want to see one inch of drop. Correct. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. I had more recently, old inspection, uh, it's an area called Noah's. He had. Like five inches of water power. Every time the unit went into high fire, it was down to about two and a half inches. And we were getting little bit of fire and going on and on and on. And that's gas pressure pipe sizing. Yep. And the area is known for low gas pressure. And that, and that material product will continue to run, doesn't have to care in the world, and it'll burn itself up. Uh, these are a little bit smart. Uh, we ended up having to uh, get to reduce the bit of power. Yeah. 
so back to your question about it's nice to check everything in the house or a good percentage of what you can get running. Yeah. 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 yeah, I get it. And that's why we bring it up. Um, but again, we get, I don't know how many calls come back to the manufacturers and manufacturers fault and they want components for free and covered under warranty. Uh, no. And that's why in the class I asked, what was my pressure drop? And we had at least three people say, I can go all the way down to three and a half inches. And I forget what I used for an example, nine or eight. No, you can't. All right. National Fuel Code will tell you half inch pressure drop. So now that's when you got to get in, look at your regulators, your gas line sizing. All of our manuals do uh, give you a distance for three quarter inch, one inch pipe, et cetera. Um, let me see if I can get this to play. So here we're going to show um, checking your spark transformer. Um, so we're going to put a voltmeter here. So first of all, we recommend power off the boiler, put your meter leads in, power the boiler back up. Now, should I be reading 120 volts here right now? No, because I haven't gone into ignition yet. So if you look at that voltmeter right now, I'm only reading 1.9 volts, right? And so it's going to have a pre-purge. It's going to go through its sequence. And then we're going to energize that spark igniter and right there. Now I've got 118 volts for about four seconds or three seconds. Okay. That's my trial for ignition. All right. Um, so now it's going to purge again. Make sure we get rid of any residual gas. We're going to re-energize there again. And here we're showing 118 volts, 0.6. All right. Um, so again, short little intervals. We don't have a pilot on these. OK, uh, pilots typically can give you eight to 10 seconds, um, depending on the commercial products or, or products. Um, so we have 10 tries for ignition, uh, which would be error code 11, eight try eight on error code 10, which means we actually lit but flamed out. Okay. This order should have been. Um, this is re it should have been flipped around. Checking my spark ignition should have been after error code 11. All right, because error code 10 was about air and fuel. All right. So what we're also showing here, and it's moving very, very slowly. Uh, you must be having an internet problem. Um, was taking the uh, igniter out and inspecting this igniter. We do give you an extra gasket. So inspect that gasket. If it's broken, replace it. And here is your igniter, um, and you want to check your gapping and clean it. And to clean these, all you need is a rag. A dollar bill works. You can even use your hand. Okay, uh, don't use sandpaper. We're going to leave grooves in those igniter uh, rods. Why? That's sitting in corrosive environment. Corrosive environment of flue gases. Okay, and that will rust up and corrode on you as well. Anything else I'm missing on that, guys? Oh. So Gen 1 had that igniter here on the right side. Gen 2 is on the back. And what we found was during light off for propane, high altitude and everywhere else, uh, we were having rough light offs or ignition trials, error code 11. They found it to be smoother light off on the back. So that was relocated to the back. Uh, anything else I'm missing? And that has to do with the way that the burner itself was manufactured. Yeah. Um, Charlie, I don't know what's going on here. I know, I know. We're going to update them again. Uh, I, can, I can send the video out to Steve or I can also put it in the recording. Well, this, if I'm correct, is also on Lars Academy, okay. uh, so they can view that. You, you said you're doing this for a wholesaler? Yeah. Okay. I'll just send them the link for it. Okay. All right. Okay. Perfect. Yeah. So why don't you send them through yeah. Wrath? Can we take this off record? Yeah. So I could, okay, I mean, I, this should have been done three minutes ago. I, should I just click stop sharing? Uh, can you just go to the next slide? If it lets me. There you go.
By the way, while we're waiting, somebody had asked about teardown classes. We will be offering some teardown classes. Not don't have anything on the calendar. Nothing's on the agenda right now, but we'll offer some teardown classes here at RAF. Uh, so this is kind of the overview. That's what I, we were asked. Uh, John and I were, were asked to come in, uh, do an overview of the products. Uh, some of you guys haven't even installed these yet, uh, and then we can work on uh, doing teardown here. Um, and those are typically smaller classes, 10 to 12 people, right? Max, what have you held in the past? Uh, eight. Eight to 10, okay. Sorry. We're turning off the... Turn what off? Are we turning off the recording? Yes, yeah, might as well.